in your currency. Splurge your millions, buying houses like Monopoly. Fucking nine to five, man, the money is a joke to me. Buying cryptocurrency, my money in the privacy. I make it rain dollars, the watch me disappear. I'm so fly, man, I'm a niece of Anakin. Hey guys and girls, welcome to this week's episode of the OBS Bucci Podcast. I'm your host, Dave Birch. This is a show unraveling the truth to the side of the 21st century. Uh, we're now exiting the Matrix and waking up to motherfucking reality. And today I have a special guest, Charlie. Thank you for coming on. Good to be here. Um, I guess maybe just give the quick sure. half minute or minute intro sure. of who you are, what you do here at the sure. Investor. So, my name is Charlie. I've been a part of the Investor Relations team here for almost three years. Um, my role is to help clients come on board and want to build or grow their property portfolio, whether they got none or they've already got 20. Um, I worked in general real estate before coming here, and uh, yeah. So, you've seen how real estate works and you've seen. Yeah. What we do, and it's like it's a whole different take, I guess, on yeah. on, uh, on property. You know, you look, it's like I think when you look at a car, right? You go, oh, you know, you can be a race car driver, a car salesperson, a mechanic, an engineer. Or, you know, it's it's a different society to with the, with the same property. So, thanks, Charlie. And um, today we're going to take a deep dive into different sort of assets out there, right? Like I know single handedly, like you got you speak to thousands of people a year, and you've Helped out hundreds of people get to you know, large property portfolios. You mentioned that sometimes people come to us with 20 properties, it's very few and far in between that yes. come to us. Um, I asked Patrick this on another podcast recently. Um, how many, what percentage of people would come to you with, like most people leave us with half dozen, 10, 15, 20 properties in their portfolio, but how many people come to you with like any property and how many people come to you? Yeah, just yeah, I would say there's probably about maybe about a quarter of people who come to us already have maybe five plus properties. Okay. Um, another, and then the rest would probably be people who either have no properties. Maybe they're like twenty. Maybe they're twenty-five. Maybe they're thirty. Maybe they're like fifty. And they just have a PPR. Yeah. But then some people come to us with a PPR and they've done two or three investment properties. Yeah. In their local town. Yeah. And they don't really do it much, and they would see the first fight earlier, and everyone yeah. just told them they maxed out, and yeah. we come we come to the rescue. Typical story, typical yeah. story. So uh, I think that like everybody's journey is is different and everybody comes to the table with something different. And it um, doesn't matter if someone's 18. I've got, a, I've got a kid that's joined up recently. I don't know. He, I think he's one of uh, someone else's client. He's, uh, he's just turned 17, right? He's buying his first property. It's like, that's fucking bad, right? Mm-hmm. It's like everyone's at different stages of life. Um, and everybody's position is different, what they're investing into, what's got them to where they are. Today, we're going to be talking about property, but we're also going to talk about crypto, shares, bonds, um, precious metals, uh, and how all that comes into play. Because you know, I've seen people that have um, you know turned 10 grand into a million bucks in crypto, right? I remember when I first heard about Bitcoin, it was one of our clients, actually. I was at a pub. I was at the casino on the Gold Coast with a mate of mine now, and... Um, uh, we were just chatting and he told me about he was building a house and he needed 10 grand and he said oh I've got no money I'm stressed blah blah like building this house that he made like a million bucks on and um, he said I've got this bitcoin I was like what the fuck's bitcoin right it was like maybe 2014 or 2013 or something he said oh it's gone up it's, I put like 2 grand in it it turned into 10 grand and you know I can sell it it's maybe got 20 grand or something it turned into and he goes I can sell it and I was like oh what is it? He goes, oh, no, it's money, blah, blah. And I was like, you know, it sounds like barter card, right? Barter card was from like the 1990s. It was like this thing. It was like a system that they used. And it's like, it sounds like a scheme, mate. Sell it, right? And he sold it. And about six months later, he put on eBay, on, on eBay, on Facebook. He said, um, oh, I wish I didn't sell my crypto, my Bitcoin, because no, the crypto is really around at the time. Um, I wish I didn't sell Bitcoin and gone up to like $300 to $600. I'm like, I doubled over you know, a few days. And I was like, what the fuck is that, right? And I started looking into it deeper. I was like, I shouldn't have had an opinion on it, right? Because that thing, like I actually thought about not creating Bitcoin, but I'd actually had discussions with people around me about having a sound money and a sound currency, because that currency is really poor. And it sort of was an entry gate and a deep dive into macroeconomics and seeing how, you know, the financial system works. And um, so that's pretty cool what it was, right? That's sort of when I got into it. Seeing pros and cons of it, right? We've had uh, lots of people come to us over the years. Uh, we even have a, a channel, right? We actually had a, a be decentralized, be decentralized yeah. right? It's a crypto channel that we did. I stopped talking on it years ago. Um, 
energy I can for myself. So Finland, I think it was more Grand Corona. I was so excited by like you know what was happening. It was like the financial crisis of the year, right? Um, but I've seen people come to us where they've bought two grand worth of crypto. I had one client I, uh, that bought into one crypto. They put less than five thousand into it, turned to one point six million dollars, right? It's like, how the fuck do we get that out, right? It's like, how do we get it out and how do we get it into physical assets? So if you look at crypto, like, yeah, you can have a big win, but for every big win, there's, like, people that have spent 200 grand they're holding two grand worth of, you know, money. So it's all crypto. And, um, you know, it, it is very wild, very volatile. Yeah. I, uh, I remember mining a coin. It's like Z coin classic, the first fork of it. And, uh, and, the Z, yeah, well, I forget which one it was. The Z coin classic, it was like an old Z coin. Um, and it was like, I had like a thousand dollars, it was like less than a dollar to the coin, it went to 400 bucks a coin. I was buying this shit for ages, it was like nothing. I was like, it's not moving much. But um, it, it can be wild. And, you know, the good thing about it, I guess, is, you know, it's it's um, it's liquid. You know, yeah. If you have property and you want to get out of it, it's a big process. But it is wild. Um, the you know, it, it, it should be a part of people's portfolio, right? Someone's got twenty grand, can't buy a property yet. Maybe you can invest into it, but certainly know your position to get out. I've seen people would have had a million bucks and it's got down to five hundred bucks or two thousand dollars, and they're waiting for the next uh, the next cycle. So um, shares, I don't know if you want to talk about shares. I think a lot of people shares are good. The issue sometimes is that it can be reliant. On individuals, yeah. Like, what was what we talked about the other day? We work. Yeah. How much is that worth at the peak? Well, it's lost like ninety ninety five yeah. percent of the day. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, it's in real estate. It's a commercial real estate business. Yeah, the, the, the offices, the hotspot offices that work from anywhere. Yeah. Um, but the issues with a lot of them is the fact that people won't put this. If you have a self managed super fund and you don't have, and it's not property focused, if it's stock driven focused, then you're picking those stocks. So you're basically putting your time and fund. Yeah. In the hand of how many stocks you pick, three, four, five. Yeah. Um, same. You can do the same with mutual funds. Obviously, get a bit less growth. But the issue is, if you're young and you've got a thousand bucks, yeah, make ten percent a year. Yeah. So it's you know not saying you got to. Obviously, you can't put a thousand dollars towards a property or to get yeah. into a property, but you can definitely put it to getting it closer to getting a property. All yeah. those other things you can do. I guess using the vehicle trail. Like I always talk about the vehicle. If we're going to get to the if we're going to go to the, like, airport. To the airport, right? The boy said, how do you get... And I'm going to throw it out there. I've used this analogy over the years and, you know, sometimes I'm like, oh, wow, it's the first time you use it, right? How do you get to Perth, right? Easy answer, folks. How do you get to Perth, right? People say, well, you fly there, right? If you're in Perth, you don't have to fly anywhere. You walk, you catch a bus, you, you know, drive. If you're in Sydney, well, you get to the airport. Well, you, you catch a plane. Well, a plane ain't going to land you out, so you need to get to the airport, you need to you know, catch a bus and Uber, whatever, get to the airport, fly to the other side. But you can drive, you can walk. There's, there's pros and cons with all different types of vehicles that you use. And really, like, using the crypto as a, as a vehicle, well, then it's cool, or whether you're using um, shares as a vehicle. But, you know, we're talking about beforehand that, you know, there was an article today about a CEO, right? The Woolies. Yeah, CEO Woolies, right? And he had to resign. I don't even see what the interview is, right? But he did some bad interview. Yeah, I think it was, with a, it was with the ABC. Yeah. And they were just calling him out on everything. Because I think cause the, all the other major networks don't because they rely on the... Yeah, the advertising. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and he bagged someone out and then he stormed out of the interview and... and yeah. yeah, you told me you got fired today or yesterday or sat down. Wasn't it? Yeah, you resigned, you retired. Yeah. yeah. And I guess, you know, when you look at it, like you can't control anything to do with the share or the yeah. company or anything like that. You're at mercy, like maybe it will take off, maybe it won't. Um, uh, you, you mentioned something before in about super funds and we weren't, like this episode's not really about super funds and I want to put a little disclaimer in there that, you know, anything that we're saying today is a financial advice. We're not sure it's like a financial advisor, but, um, you know, we're just looking and having a, you know, a chat about you know, the benefits and pros and cons of, of different sorts of assets. And certainly, there's lots of people that have made lots of money out there in the stock market. Um, I look at a lot of them as zombie companies. They're just companies that are about to blow up, that are like they're big Ponzi schemes. I've seen companies that have gone down different rounds of funding and how they get their funding and the investors that go in. And you bring in a new sucker to pay out the old sucker, right? And they're selling some shares off, getting diluted, and their valuation goes up on paper. But it's 
no real asset behind it or no tangible sort of asset. Um, it's in the trust of that. Um, so uh, when you look at the, I always talk to people when they're, you know, obviously not giving financial advice for soft managed super fund or that, but I always question when people bring up that subject, is like if you've got a quarter of a million bucks in your super fund, what is it invested in? Who got it? Is it shares? Well, oh, what shares? Yeah. yeah. Seriously. We saw a, a, a corona happen and then we saw someone have like 200 grand in their super went down to 150 and they go, oh, it's okay. My super fund's back to 200 now, right? And it's like, well, it's gone back there, but what has happened with you know inflation at the same time? So 100 grand doesn't buy what 100 grand did two years ago. So that's the aspect of it is like, well, what is it invested into? And I always think like, I guess this takes on the bonds and, and whatnot. Like people don't even know what a bond is, right? right. But uh, bonds are basically money printing. Right? If you look at the government, the government took out a trillion dollars worth of debt. They create bonds and now sell them, and they're a financial instrument that people can invest into, and they pay a, a yield. Um, but that yield is generally way below <laughs> inflation, right? So it's a, it's a scam in itself. Um, and people say, "Oh, yeah, I'm invested into a real estate trust, right? The, the commercial yeah, real yeah, estate yeah. trust, right?" Um, I've been looking at different like I had conversations with people. I was in the city the other day having a chat with bankers, like not a bank's office, but it's like a, a financier's office. And um, we're talking about the building that they're in, and it's like it's like they moved on the office and that. And I was like, I thought you guys owned it. And they're like, no, no, no. Someone owns it. It sold for four hundred million uh, two years ago. Now it's only worth three hundred million. It's lost twenty five percent. Right. I think to myself, like, who are the ones that are playing the hand, right? Like, when it comes to shares or when it comes to you know, these fi- different types of financial instruments, like, who are making those decisions, right? It's, if you've got a quarter million bucks in your super, who's got the grubby little nips on it, right? They're taking fees and all that sort of stuff. If you're investing it into a, 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 a stock, um, what is that investment? I remember back of day trading uh, in 2008 in the GFC, um, Centro. Centro was a shopping center. It's no longer in existence, from my understanding. And there was two different types. One's the management business, one's the actual real estate business. So it's like, where is your money derived? You have no visibility over those aspects. Of it. It's not like you're buying a piece of real estate. If you were to go invest into a, into a your super fund or whatever, there's bonds that are created. If Westfield decide they want to build a new shopping center or an extension to build a car park, they don't go to the big four banks and say, hey, I want to revalue at ninety five percent LVR, and here's my valuation. They go, we're just going to raise some capital, right? They might create a wholesale fund, and they go, let's get some bonds or package it together, and we'll pay and we'll call it a real estate um, cash flow fund, right? I'm just using examples here of you know how big institutions work, um, and that's not saying how Westfield works. I use an example just in case Westfield watching this and goes, hey, let's talk shit about this, right? Um, I'm just using it as an example, giving you a free plug here. Right? Um, but if you had a big shopping centre, they're going to create financial instruments to be able to get their funding to do those sure. things. So you think you're getting a return, but you're really just getting it some cash flow derived from something else. If something blows up in that instance, you've lost your asset. Has it caught up with inflation? What's your capital worth? 100 grand 10 years ago to 100 grand in 10 years' time is going to be very, very different. And when you go to pull that capital out of the bond, the 10 year bond, the 5 year bond, whatever, you know. Can you get probably going to buy the same bond? I won't be able to buy a share. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I personally, I'll never even look at investing into a bond. Um, shares, um, uh, when we look at shares, uh, you know, you can get a return on them, you can get a dividend from them, um, you can leverage some of them, yeah, um, sure. you can invest in mining stocks, you can invest into instruments that you probably wouldn't be able to go invest. Like, I don't see many people going and buying a gold mine, right? But you can invest into a gold mine share, right? So, there is. Benefits to if you want to sell it, you might get your money back in three days' time. Um, you know, it could turn to zero. I don't see too many of them going to zero, but you know, they do go to zero. I've never seen someone have a house and it's been a half million dollars and it's gone to zero um, any time over the years. So, yeah, there, there's pros and cons to them. And I guess liquidity in them is, is important. If you look at um, precious metal, gold, and silver, I think it has good intrinsic value. But I don't know anyone that's ever made money out of silver, right? Like silver in 1980 used to be worth $50 an ounce. Today it's worth $25, $30 an ounce. So um, how are you making money? Yeah, it could be a store of value, but there's lots of other things. And my favorite go-to is, is property, and it's your favorite go-to, and it's what we talk about predominantly. But do I invest 
into all these different things? Yeah, oh, very heavily invested into these different spaces. Um, but with, with caution, it's like, what is the purpose of you getting to that people? And well, look, I think a lot of clients too will use those other asset classes, use the liquidity of that to get their properties. Yeah. Well, a lot of people are tied on cash. So, okay, well, I've got 10K worth of Bitcoin. I've got 10 grand worth of silver. Yeah. Let me sell those to get my next deposit. Yeah. Or my first deposit. Yeah. Or my, my kid's deposit. Whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. If you, if you find it hard to save when you buy a nice block of gold or a block of silver or some coins or whatever, it becomes fun to save. So it's like a good savings thing to be able to get into precious metals. Yeah. Um, when you get into shares, you've got a little bit of volatility. It's like, oh, I've seen it go up, put 10 grand in now, it's worth 12 grand, and it can be fun. Uh, when you're into crypto, it's like, fuck, I'm sitting at the poker machine, right? <laughs> it's like, it's like um, I think there's some very, when I invest into crypto, my favorite ones are protocols. So they're things that need to be built on top of That's where the value comes from, those things. So I, I don't invest in the applications that often, but I do sometimes when I'm seeing a market, which is, I feel a bit like a betting man on the day, I will throw, you know, 100 bucks of this, 100 bucks of that, 100 bucks of that. It's like putting the chips out there. And last time we had a bull cycle, like, I was seeing stuff that'll put 50 bucks in turn to seven grand, right? Mm-hmm. And someone will work 50 bucks or work. No, but five cents, yeah. five cents, right? Um, but it's it comes with a, a lot more risk. Um, you can pull your money out, like I've sold stuff, and it's just instantly in your account within an hour or two. So liquidity very strong. Yeah. You put a property on the market, you have to take offers, take lawyers, six yeah. weeks, eight weeks, ten weeks, all that. But the fundamentals of a property, and I guess you know, we specialize in property. Maybe we can go into some of the fundamentals, like you can get a loan for it. Yeah. I think overall, kind of like what we were talking about before, there's just more control when it comes to a property. That's yeah. that's the general thing, is that you have, yeah. it's not like you're talking, it's not your one, you're not a shareholder of 50 million shares or 50 million Bitcoin or whatever the number is. Yeah. You can control what you put your rent at, which is effect, which basically affects your bottom line. Yeah. If you, if you can see what the equity is, if you want to do a little renovation, you can do a little renovation. Yeah. Um, or when buying properties or selling a property, you can negotiate the price. It's not like when you go on CoinSpot or you go on Vanguard and they have the price of the stock or the crypto, that's what you pay. It's a yeah. slight difference to buy and sell. Yeah. But we negotiate on properties every day. Yeah. So we can get stuff where if someone else wanted it, it's 200 grand. But if we wanted it, it's 185, yeah. 180. Yeah. You know? So it's having that more control over the asset as well. Yeah. 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 The tenant doesn't pay you rent. Knock on the door and find the tenant. Yeah. yeah. It's not like a creator of a cryptocurrency that's skipped the country that they're hiding in and, you know, some, yeah. some tax haven or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, I think the cool thing about property, the reason why I like it the most, is that firstly, you can leverage it. Um, secondly, it, it's not just governed by the property itself. And a lot of people get confused by that because they're just looking at it as the property themselves. I look at it that it's all the materials to go into building that asset, the inflation that surrounds that. Um, and there's other uh, plays at hand, um, you know, such as rent that you mentioned on. Um, you might buy a property today for 200 grand, rent for 300 bucks a week, but in 10 years' time, it's renting for 600 bucks a week, it's worth 600 grand, you only owe 100,000 on it. Um, the banks are empowering people by playing with the monetary policy to borrow more money. So that creates more inflation, not just on building the asset, but also that asset to purchase. Um, all the new currency that's being created out there is just forcing its way back into real estate, pushing up those prices. Um, 100 grand in shares, 100 grand in shares. You get 100 grand worth of shares, you get a 5% return on it. There's 5 grand that you pay on for the year. You put 100 grand into the property and you get a 5% growth on it. You get a 500 grand purchase price. You've got 25 grand instead of 5 grand. But then you've also got the cash flow that's attached to it, which could be a 10% yield, which is not greater. Because so. some obviously stocks pay dividends, but the stocks that get a good dividend give it because they don't have the same growth as other companies. Yeah. Like I think Coca Cola gives a good dividend. Yeah. And that's because they're not growing exponentially every year because yeah. they're around 100 years. Yeah. Um, whereas other companies that are newer and younger focus more on the growth rather than trying to keep investing by giving them a higher yield. Yeah. Where probably you can get both. Probably you can get the growth, but you can still rent for it can be twenty grand and rent for forty bucks this year, yeah. and then in five years' time it's going to be five fifty. And you can control that too, exactly. but you know, well, you can't control what's going to come out of the mouth of the yeah. CEO. Exactly. Yeah. They might you you they'll have a they'll have a just, um, stakeholder meeting, and yeah. they'll tell you that they're dropping their dividend. 
Yeah. And you're like, what about she's Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Well, they'll do a, a government policy will change and then yeah. it affects the company and the shares go down by 80%. Um, so contracts disappear out of the companies. And, yeah. So looking at um, the overall picture, like, you know, is, is it better to invest in the shares or property or crypto or um, all of that? Um, we're not here to give anyone financial advice on that front. Are you, are you on that front of getting financial advice? Just understand. I remember at, what did your parents say uh, growing up, right? Like growing up, I know they said a few things. Who you can't trust, right? You can't trust a used car salesperson, right? Yeah. You can't trust the real estate agent. Mm-hmm. And what's the third one? Financial advisor. No, the insurance <laughs> salesman. Oh yeah. So you exactly. can't trust the insurance what's salesman. The <laughs> yeah. So a little fun fact. Um, uh, to be an insurance salesperson, we need to be, you need to be a financial advisor. Right? So the only way you can be that is to be a financial planner. And once you become a financial planner, um, they're regulated much like a doctor. Right? So any time you go to university to get one of these certificates, you're going in there and you're only allowed to talk in the profession of what's inside that box. So if you go to the doctor and the doctor knows that you're uh, they've been doing drugs and that you're eating bad food, the doctor can't say, hey, look, um, you know, you shouldn't cut out eating all this bad food, etc. One, two, three. If you eat this fruit, this vegetable, this meat, you're going to be in a better position. Um, they'll lose their license. They can only prescribe medication. As a financial planner, they can only talk about what's inside that box that they're allowed to prescribe it. Right. So financial planners don't get incentivized by a property. Right. And financial planners don't get incentivized. The only way that they do is if they sell off the plan properties. There's a lot of financial planners that sell off the plan properties, which are just stable. Right. Financial planners get paid for managed funds and selling into different funds. They get like a one percent commission for this. If you put a hundred thousand dollars into a into a fund, then you get um a, you know they get like a thousand dollar per year you know remuneration from that. That's a commission. So they're incentivized by selling just like a doctor who can sell tablets. They're getting incentivized to sell what's inside that. So be very mindful when you're getting the advice. And I'd always suggest, but I personally think. Why I put all the education out there and you know, give to all our investors. Everyone should be their own financial advisor because no one's got a more best, vested interest in your well being than yourself. Yeah. But be your own financial advisor and look around you and take advice and take guidance. And from my professional network, I've got people from all different walks of life, right? Whether it becomes you know, my lawyers or my accountants or anyone that's around me, I'll probably take advice from them maybe. 20% of the time, but I take their feedback and I try and minimise risk around that. So I like when my accountant says, don't do this, or my lawyer says, don't do that. It's like, okay, but why? But why? But why? And it's like, okay, cool. These are the five reasons why. Well, we can minimise those risks and still take that action. And if you look at a financial planner, like what do they get paid? How much do they get paid? Who's paying them? They're all very good questions to ask. Um, a financial planner should be able to give you clarity. They could Put out some charts, which I wouldn't have pulled out charts on any investor. If you were seen a chart, huh? don't do that, right? The red flags, appear, right? You want to see factuals. Um, want to know if the financial plan is going to be your lord and savior. What is their retirement plan? How do they plan on exiting the yeah, yeah. 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 How old will you be when you retire? What sort of income are you looking yeah. at? Yeah. They shouldn't be selling if they don't have their plan, or if they're not open to tell you their plan. Yeah. They call a broker because they're broke. <laughs> Um, so when you're talking to them, try and find out about what they've invested into. Uh, what they they might not want to say, oh, yeah, I'm worth a million bucks or whatever the case may be, but try and understand, well, if you're planning on retiring, what age do you plan on retiring, right? You'll see the, the, the glitches in there because they can't answer it. And I remember uh, I, was at a, I used to smoke a lot of cigarettes back in the day. Right? I used to smoke like two packets, three packets a day sometimes. And I was out one day and I don't drink. Eat bad food, no. but um, I remember this guy. He was like at a wedding or something. He was like a boating guy. And he came up to me and he's like, "Can I borrow my life, mate?" So I'm, he's half this, right? And he's like, "Yeah, you go, right? He's at my life. Oh, what are you guys doing here? He's like, oh, we're having a meeting about finance. And like, I'm a financial planner. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Find the radio, yeah, mate." <laughs> Move on. And then one of my mates was there going, "Oh, tell me about it, right? You should collaborate with Dave, whatever." And he's like, "Oh, yeah, I'm." I was like, oh, tell me what about it, what, what you invest in. He goes, oh, I recommend uh, my clients to buy Telstra shares and bonds, right? I was like, 
okay, but what about inflation, right? And he goes, well, a dollar today is going to be worth a dollar in five years' time. <laughs> I was like, do you even know what inflation is? Yeah, of course I do, but our economy is not shit, right? It's not like a third world country, so our currency is never going to crash. This guy couldn't hold a conversation. All he could talk about was the products that he was selling, yeah, exactly. right? What he's getting his commission off. Yeah, and then I was like, okay, tell me about that. And I was like, and he's like telling me, he's trying to school me, he's telling me that uh, I don't know why. I didn't, but I'm not there to fucking, oh, yeah, just like the next one. I was just having a, a conversation. And then um, I actually, the funny, the part of leaving the conversation, because he's telling me about all this stuff. I was like, how long have you been doing this? I've been here for two years or whatever. I was like, oh, what did you do before? I was a landscaper. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> how many people have you got to retire with? None, right? What have you done? None, okay. And I said to him, like, is a conference you going to, right? There's a conference. I identified the location of the conference. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm going there. I said, yeah, cool. I'm going to be a guest speaker there. <laughs> it was just kind of funny because it's like this guy is giving people advice and people go in there and they trust them with blind faith, yeah. right? Blind faith. Go and do this, right? And yeah, in some instances, like people shouldn't be in control of their finances. They're really fucked. But like these type of communication is like, I don't. I've seen a couple of financial advisors and out of, let's say, 10 out of a 1,000 financial advisors that I trust and I like and I respect, even with the financial advisors, I'd only take like 50% of their guidance and advice because I couldn't agree with them because it just doesn't add up and doesn't make sense. So I think it's important to ask questions, get clarity, and if something works for you, then, then do it. If it doesn't work, then don't do it. I remember when I was looking to do my first property, it was this New South Wales deal, yeah. and I was asking every person I know their opinion, or at least yeah. everyone, in, at least within this business. Yeah. So I was talking to my management, I was talking to you, I was talking to the rest of the team, I was talking to the property managers upstairs, yeah. probably spoke to the accountants, I probably spoke to the marketing girls. Yeah. Um, and in the end, I ended up not doing any, or well, not doing that one. Yeah. Um, because you get all these different opinions. It's like, yeah. the property manager's going to tell you the hassle of the tenants. Yeah. But then you're going to tell me the upside of the area. Yeah. You get all this different stuff. So then, like you always say, analysis paralysis, but it's finding either the specific person or the specific company yeah. and getting their advice. That's why, that's why it's not, that's why when, a client, when, when we present properties to clients, it's not that you're, it's not like you're sending to them and then they're coming to me as someone else and they're broken to get their opinion. It's, yeah. okay, I'm soft name, I'm soft Charlie. Yeah. What am I doing? Yeah. Rather than, you know, their head falling off because they have too many ideas and too many conversations in their heads. They go home and they speak to the family. Oh, I would never invest in there or yeah. units don't go up in value. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, exactly. they do go up in value. And, you know, we buy units, blocks of units, houses, everything. But it's just, there are those opinions that people have that, you know, they don't pay the bills because, you know, yeah, it's sort of mind like now. Let's come back to that. Um, any other comments? Or? Um, I think this is a good one. I like the, the misconceptions or myths about property investments. So I was like, finding good properties for 200k, pulling equity month after settlement, purchasing several properties per year at the same time, being hands on and hands free. Yeah, that'd be cool. So Charlie, looking at um, you know the overall picture, right? Like shares are cool in some instances. Crypto is cool. I love crypto. I'd right? actually have. I got rated. Fun fact in the book, I got rated by the AFP once, right? <laughs> I got raided by the AFP for a drug lab uh, because I was sucking out power at like 20 grand a month for residential house. And um, the amount of power usage indicated a, a, like a marijuana facility or something, right? And the cops came to the office with guns. Like, they didn't think it was me. They just thought it was a rental property, but it was actually my house, right? They came in. They'd done a heat map over my house. Yeah. And it was glowing red, right? <laughs> it's got all these things. And um, basically, it was about... Uh, it was, about 100 computers that were running in there with about 100 graphics cards. Oh, and um, I was mining crypto, and uh, it was pretty funny because I went into the police station and I was like, oh, what am I here for? And they're like, oh, I'm a constable. I don't remember because that was not safe, right? But I just remember the name. It's just cheeky. She's like, Nathan Bird, you come I'm like, oh, wow, they fucking know who I am. What am I here for? Tell me, put me out of the mystery. They're like, oh, I'm from the drug squad. I'm like, from the drug squad? <laughs> And I was like, oh, I know what you're here for. And they're like, oh, you've been here properly. This, this, this. Do you live there? What's it? And I said, yeah, yeah, What are all those computers? And I was like, fucking hell. And it took me a minute to just, yeah. like, what am I here for? Did someone die? Like, like, they came to my office to find me to talk to me about my property. And it was, it was funny. But um, my point is, is I'm very heavily invested in all these <laughs> different financial instruments. I run a solar farm. There's lots of things I'm invested into. But you know, property's my favorite go-to. And it's, it's what got me 
retired. Uh, I day traded through GSL, making like five grand a day in the GFC whilst I was working a job just trading shares until I started trading shares and doing that money in the account for probably like T plus three, which is like now the money in there and you sell it later. But then I got stuck in trading holes. I would lose like fucking 10 grand, 20 grand, and I was like losing more than I could make. And I was like, it was miserable because I was like, it was, it was fun, it was like a high, but it was like a playing on a crypto because it was free dating very active, yeah. Uh, playing on a poker machine. So you can make money in all different instruments, and certainly I've invested into every instrument out, or most instruments out there, but property is the best in my view because I can leverage it, I can uh, minimize risk, I can control it. Um, I know it's a physical asset, so it's taken a certain amount of man hours, maybe women hours as well, not being sexist here, right? But man hours, you know? People say man hours, I'm trying to be PC for 2024, right? But like, it takes X amount of people to go and build a house, all the yeah. labor, everything. So you know that it's a, a value that you can't build it for under 200 grand. If you pick it up for that, there's value there. Exactly. What are the reasons that you like property for Charlie? You're an investor. Sure. Now hundreds of investors. Sure. I like it because it's, when we're talking about all those other asset classes, it's one of the only asset classes that will do all three things of give you the cash flow, the ongoing cash flow, kind of like a dividend, mm-hmm. but it'll also give you, you'll also be able to pour equity out mm-hmm. where you can't. A dividend stock doesn't really do that, um, unfortunately. Um, so you still hold property while you can pour value out of it without, you know, selling half of your portfolio or half of a share. Right? And activating capital gains. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the third one is obviously just getting capital growth. So all three of those things, you, know, you can't you can't really pull like via your precious metals. Your precious metals only give you much cash flow. No, you can't. Right. right. Um, so I like to sell all three of those things. It is more of a tangible good as well. I don't know. I think crypto has good use and bad use. Stocks have good use and bad use. But I think property everyone really needs a place to live. Exactly. Not everyone needs kilos or ounces of gold <laughs> in their back pocket, right? Um, so the value is only what people just bestow upon it. Yeah. Um, and I think if you know. I settled on WA purchase last month. Yeah. 186 grand. Rebound it like the month, three weeks after, 263. Right. And so, how much did you put in that? 180k or 40k? Well, I got four grand off, which came out of my deposit. The 36 grand of the deposit. Yeah. And close it. So, let's say 50k, right? Yeah. So, you rebate it. How much did you pull out? Did you get back in your bank account the next week or day month? Yeah, 57. <laughs> so, you're getting 150% return in a week because you capital back yeah. go yeah yeah but but my point is that you know doing it that way and getting the loans in the right order right because then not anyone anyone can buy properties yeah. the issue i always tell people is every everything involved in the purchase you can fuck up yeah basically right yeah. it's the property you're looking the price you get it for everything throughout the transaction structuring the loan getting a good tenant but the biggest thing is making sure it does what it needs to do for you yeah right similar with stocks and, and other investments you might buy them and they might go up in value, but it might not be what you need. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If it worsens your position, you can end up paying more tax. Yeah. Old people might disqualify you from the pension loan. But there's yeah. all different ramifications of it, right? Yeah. However, I think property is a real set of again. I think there's like a lot of mis- misconceptions and myths about you said, properties. You said the word there, tax, right? Mm-hmm. We've never once said anything about tax, right? There is tax benefits to property. Right? We're not going to go over there. We're not even going to open up the lid of it, right? But... I don't know any, like, you go buy some silver, you go buy some crypto, you go buy um, some shares. I don't see what tax benefits that you can do. You can't. The only tax benefit money. you can get from a share is if you're losing money. Lose <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you can get a depreciation on the property. You know, yeah. What's the difference? Yeah. Uh, I've got another question for each other. Like, I feel like we're a bit private with like, sharing all the info and stuff on a, on a podcast and whatnot. But I would have a question just randomly about your portfolio. You're building a nice portfolio. Um, uh, in, in, in property, have you ever been to any of your properties? No, you've never seen one. <laughs> no, one of those probably thirty minutes from my office, and I've never been to it. Really? Um, yeah, once we've got one in Sydney, two in Queensland, one in WA. All in the last probably nine months. Nine months. So you got four that you bought in nine months, yeah. and you've never seen any of them. Don't need to. Why not? Because you got. You got the photos online, which I know is obviously can be totally botched, but you got the photos online, and then you got the pest and build report, which is about 60 pages long, yeah. where the guy's job is literally to tell you everything wrong with the property. <laughs> yeah. Um, you get the agent to get updated photos, you can look at, um, sometimes you can look at ingoing and outgoing tenancy inspections. Yeah. That, again, property manager takes a photo of every single wall and ceiling and floor and every single room. Yeah. Um, you can do a pre-settlement inspection, physically, yeah. or via 
Zoom. Yeah. The agent literally walks around with an iPad and you can tell them, look up, look down, look under the drawer, look wherever, yeah. and they do all that. Yeah. So you don't need to go. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to physically go through. It's not an open home. You're not buying your PPR. You're not looking to see how big the pool is or whatever for your dream house. Yeah. It's purely an investment. It's yeah. another point of view. Google Street yeah. View. You've yeah. got <laughs> yeah. buyer's agents out there. Yeah. You've got all the, all the, the tools. Um, it just reminds me of something, bro. Like people have a fear of buying properties interstate, right? Like, oh, I've got to see it. I've got to see it. All that sort of stuff. But let's say that you were to go and buy Woolworths flight for the month today, right? Let's, let's say we go and buy Woolworths shares, right? Let's say you buy Woolworths shares. I don't have any stores now. Let's say there's 500 stores in the country. I'm making that up. I think there's probably about 500 for sure. If you bought Woolworths shares, would you go and inspect every 500 <laughs> fucking Woolworths stores, yeah, right? exactly. I don't like that Woolworths store in the fucking housing commission area, right? Well, neither does anyone else, right? Yeah. But it's the numbers that stack up. And when you treat your investing like a business, um, it just becomes another commodity. Just exactly. like it. Yeah. And that's what I tell people too, because if they're purely like a lot of investors come to us and they might be in Melbourne and they're like, oh, I've got three properties in Victoria. Yeah. And it's like, why? Of all states too. <laughs> but, but like, oh, it's where I grew up. It's what I know. But it's like, it's like you're putting your whole future in just what you know and just the area you can see. It's like, it's like when, you know, you look out, it's like when you go to the balcony outside and you look at the view, you can probably see about five kilometers in every direction. Yeah. And like, if that's all you know, you're limiting your opportunity to that. Yeah. Like, for example, you come to a buyer's agency or you just look at you know, nationwide. Yeah. Your chance of having success is drastically higher because there's more options out there. Mm-hmm. Um, so a lot of people limit their search because that's what they feel comfortable knowing and they lack the area and they, they know people down the street and everyone's got an opinion because everyone, everyone they know lives in that area. Yeah. But if... The opinions don't pay the bills. Yeah, the opinions don't pay, pay the bills. And if, like you said, we run your portfolio like a business because that's what it is. Yeah. And so, you know, you need to take the emotion out of it. Yeah. So you really some I have some clients that don't even look at the don't even look at the property or even the pictures online. They look at the cash flow and go, Great, cool. This is how much it's gonna give me, this is how much it costs, this is how much it's worth. Yeah. Put me down for it. Yeah. You know. I should pull out follow marketing catalog. I saw it recently somewhere, I don't know where it was, it was like moving house a year ago or something. It was somewhere. I found all these flyers that I had these two like educational seminars and sort of uh, reno- renovation sites. So I'd, I'd do a reno and I have like people come along and I'd be like, oh, this is the painting, this is what we've done this week. They come like twice, right? They go like, today they'll come in, it's all getting fucked up. Come back two weeks later, yeah. it's almost all yeah. finished, right? It's like, this is what's done, this is what's done, blah, blah, blah. And I remember I handed out these packs and it was like, create this uh, online product, it's like an online tool. I'm not going to even go into it because I give people business ideas that I created it and I was like, no, this is a really cool business idea and it was mad. But I had on my flyers, uh, numbers don't lie, right? And I had like all these things. It's like people, you know, your emotions can lie. You're, you know, you yeah. can, oh, you don't, you get greedy, you can get fearful, like it's all emotion, ego, whatever. And then, you know, the numbers are the fundamentals of what's, you know, good or bad. It's the numbers stack up, cool. If it doesn't stack up, don't do it. And looking at your property, like most people get caught up in the prettiness of, oh, it's a nice street or it's potential because there's a train line. How many people have you ever heard of over the years, right, being a real estate agent, thing is what we do? They go, oh, there's no train line nearby, or there's like, there's no shops, or there's no schools. It's like, if that was a fucking case in no other area, there's no train line, we'd <laughs> never go on, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's, it's it, people's views are not on the money, and the money is what is going to pay your bills, ultimately, and you need to know your numbers. So if you can treat your investment like that business, the numbers don't lie. I think a lot of people also kind of, when thinking about property, kind of can't imagine. The idea of buying a property under 250 grand. It must be bad. It must be this. Yeah, exactly. It must be that. It's like, yeah. And then you go, look at the photos. Look at it. Yeah. It's 10 years old. Yeah. It's brand new. Like, you're yeah. all on time. What's the quickest and what's the longest that you've ever taken equity out of the property? Mm. This is random. This is like, not for everyone, right? This is, this is oh, like, to be honest, as soon, as soon as, well, it's different for everyone, but the good thing is that I'm very close to the broker I use. So yeah. as soon as I settle, I just walk up to them. Yeah. The next day, pretty much, and just go, hey, you want to re- do a valuation on this? Give them a day or so, then they can tell me. Yeah. Um, I think I think the I think I bought one in Queensland. That was one hundred eighty five thousand for a two better rents of four twenty a week. Yeah. And I got that rebound for two sixty three days later. Three days later. And then I think um, I think the Sydney one. I think that one was again maybe like five weeks, six weeks after that because I did one right afterwards. Yeah. I forget what the number was, but then I did the WA purchase, and then we refi them together, and at that point. It went up, I think, another 15 grand. Yeah. And yeah. we did that together. Crazy, so, yeah. yeah. So, in essence, you're putting in the deposit, you're getting the deposit back. There's like 100% return. And you have the property. You have the property, right? And you've got the cash flow. Exactly. 
and it's in perpetuity. I think there's enough there. That's just, uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's just in short, right? That's yeah. like, that's just simple, simple math. It's right? like, the, there's obviously a lot more to it and a lot of people get tied down on focusing that, you know, they can't do several at a time or it's going to occupy all of their time uh, when you have, you know, two, three, four, five, ten, twenty properties. Yeah. Uh, that's the reason, that's the reason people use us. Yeah. So they can be hands-free and come yeah. to an expert and minimize the risk of doing so. You yeah. might buy ten properties, but if you buy them in the wrong order, you're not going to get the ten and you'll shoot yourself in the foot. Yeah. So the structure and sequencing and how it's done this correctly. It's not just finding something that happens to be at a two hundred degree angle to a deal. Yeah. Because probably that price, you know, if it's in a certain location, then sure. Yeah. But if everything else in that is that price, then yeah, you should think twice. Yeah. There's a difference between cheap and something yeah. of good value. Yeah. yeah. That's very important. A lot of people I had someone today um, on a portfolio review that was like, Oh, I found a property, it's great, blah blah blah. I was like, talking I know you're talking about <laughs> that's not your client. That'll be fine, but it is is it Actually, yes, 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 it is your client. I was talking to a couple of people, but um, yes, your your client, yes, yes, they so found a property for uh, two hundred thousand, rent six hundred bucks a week, and I was like, yeah, you can't get financed for that. That's a, that's yeah, a motel. Might, you need to buy full cash. You have to buy cash, and you'll never be able to refinance it. And it's probably not going to be worth it. Plus, there's yeah. strata fees of like yeah. twenty grand a year, and cash rates of ten grand. You know, all those short stay, short stay accommodations, you got to pay like cleaning fees, every single all that sort of stuff. They add up heaps. They take out like they take out a third of it. Yeah. Um, You're funding the, the resort either. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that was not a good buy. It yeah. was a very bad buy. Um, so yeah, it's, um, on that note, guys, uh, I think that what we're just talking about there really sums up and hits home why properties is key, right? It's a, a favorite go-to for me. You've got the equity, the banks like, it's a financial instrument. You like it. The properties have actually been weaponized, right? So all those, uh, blue head people that are whinging saying that we're capitalists and all that sort of stuff that are watching the ABC and they're going nuts, right? Going, you fucking calls this, you greedy baby boomers, whoever, right? <laughs> and they're pointing their finger out on the day. Um, not even a baby boomer. I'm just saying in general, <laughs> yeah, I just sit there and complain, exactly. right? The victim mentality. Um, they're probably right by saying that, you know, the property is being weaponized, right? Mm-hmm. By the bank. It's been turned into a commodity and a financial instrument, right? You have the opportunity to sit at the table and play the game, or you have the opportunity to sit there and point the finger and say, why not me, right? You're taking action, Vess is taking action. Hopefully you guys are taking action. I'm taking action. It's been my favorite thing. I've been playing this game for 20 years now, right? It's uh, it. I had a face full of pimples 20 years ago now, but a face full of gray hair. So it's like, it's, it's it, I can sit here and tell you, I've seen these cycles, I've seen it go through, and um, I'm excited to be alive today to be able to witness what's going on. If I could sit here and say, I wish I'd got into property 10 years earlier. I could have bought property for half the price, full of the price, yeah. and what I paid. That's what everyone says. But everyone says it. I think a lot of that, uh, probably every, when we have discovery sessions, yeah. um, that's one of the first things people say is towards the end, like, oh, I wish I did this sooner. But I don't tell them, the fact that they're doing this call yeah. puts them ahead of the 90% of people that haven't done anything. Exactly. Exactly. And what are you going to be saying in 10 years' time? Exactly. Be thankful. Yeah. Thankfully, you even start. If they, if they, well, then they kick the themselves. Yeah, then they the kick themselves even more. Yeah, it's, just, it's the same people with Bitcoin. Oh, I wish. It's everyone going, oh I, w- oh, I wish I bought it when it was 10 cents. Like, exactly. You wouldn't have gotten to that point. Of it you would have sold it out of five bucks. Exactly, yeah. 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 Uh, anyway. Having a strategy, <laughs> having a strategy, having a, 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 an exit plan as well. An exit plan, yeah. So on that, if you need uh, help with the strategy, you need help with getting started, want to have a chat. Charlie, Charlie's doing his portfolio in real time. Have yeah. a chat with my... People sit there and be like, oh, good, this is 20 years ago. You watch the 200 grand amount of drills. I like, well, I was, but I'm still buying stuff today. Yeah. My goal is like massive this year. Uh, of how I want to push myself. So, you know, Charlie's doing it real time. Chat with Charlie if you want to chat. We'll get a link drop below. Yeah. Um, uh, you can reach out for a discovery session, have a chat with Charlie. Yeah. And um, yeah, if you like this video, please give us a, a thumbs up, a like, share it with your friends and family, a comment below, um, and you can check us out every Thursday on Google Play, Apple Play, Spotify, and YouTube. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a great day. Bye for now. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Charlie. Oh, that was fun. Yeah, yeah. Like Bilal said, man, we stuck in the matrix. This my advice, don't care if you take it. The dollar back to die, soon to be hyperinflated. This my two cents, don't care if you save it. Join be decentralized and you will see. You've been lied to the whole time and it's the irony. Cause they do the exact opposite. You become a slave to the system. And up your money, all they do is profit. There's no conspiracy theory. You better hear me. Crypto will set you free before the system does. I 
I don't care if you do or you go But what I'm saying isn't truth to the reason you chose I've never been a failure, excuse my behavior Keep talking, haters doing me a favor And you're telling lies, I know what they've been telling you I'm the opposite of Donald Trump of Australia It's amazing, been for the taking my time